is up guys, Chris Mitch 42 here, welcome back to some more, because how I showed you last time we left off, we're at the festival, uh, and we just grabbed Lily, uh, we're taking away from her stall for a little bit, uh, to hang out with her for a bit, because she's been working really hard, uh, yeah, we're just gonna jump right in here, I don't know if we read this last time or not, but I'm gonna read it anyway, and yeah, we're gonna jump right in here, I guess the first thing we should do is look for Hanako, Lily seems kind of worried about her, and I doubt she'd be the kind of person to enjoy milling about in crowds like this all alone. So I guess we should search for Hanako. Where do first? Hmm. So both of us go quiet for a moment to think. Maybe she's in her dorm room? I doubt it. She doesn't keep too many things in there, so she'd have nothing to do. Ah! The library? It's good as a place as any to search for an avid reader, I suppose. The library it is. We'll check there first, then. Aside from the muffled sounds of the crowd seeping in from the outside, the inside of the school seems almost deserted. In order to make sure everyone had enough room, I guess all the events were organized to be held outside, on school grounds. They're definitely quite large, uh, by any other school standards. It's nice and quiet in here, isn't it? Yeah, much nicer than the hustle and bustle outside. We take our time and slowly walk through the first floor of the school, eventually reaching the stairs to the second floor. I can't help but notice how Lily anticipates every door and obstacle, her cane remaining still and her hands skating along the hallway railings. You really know the school well, don't you? She smiles and nods straight ahead. I've been here for a few years now, so I know where everything is. The dorms still trip me up, though, sometimes. I haven't been there as long, and they're not as well laid out as the main building. If I'm remembering right, they used to be unused buildings before being renovated and used as dormitories. That explains why the male and female dorms look different from the outside, and why their rooms seem kind of unusual for sleeping quarters. I'd assume she'd been living in the dormitories uh, since she began attending the school, but now I'm reminded of what she said yesterday. That's right, you mentioned that before. I'd assume that most of the students here lived in the dormitories once they enrolled. A lot of them seem to, in any case. Liz's expression becomes somewhat hard to read, my questioning of evidently touching on a delicate point. Well, how should I say? Everyone has their reasons. Something tells me that one of those with reasons is Hanako, hence her tiptoeing around the answer. My own predicament? Predicament! I don't know why I said that, a predicament. Predicament is yet another such case. I guess it's a choice everyone here would have to make for themselves, or in my instance, have made for them. It can't be helped, I suppose. At least Shimaku itself seems like a nice place. It's good to hear you say that. I thought you were coming to dislike it. What about you, though? My reverse of Lily's statement takes her by surprise. I've been here for a while, so... It's not that. You seem pretty depressed about Akira. Hmm. What's with that look? Akira's taken. Sorry, Sal. Lily never sees how fast my palm meets my face as her sly accusation. Hey, I was worried about you. There's no way to respond to concern. While she gives an amused grin, uh, we round the corner of the hallway and enter the library. And there she is, reading her books. As we do so, it isn't hard to spot Hanako, considering that the room is completely devoid of anyone else. Given that there are no staff around, I guess there's no need to head uh, to heed to the usual library rules. I call out to her. Hey, Hanako! Hanako's here? As she hears a voice, as Hanako's head flicks up from behind the book, probably the same one she's been reading since uh, on Friday. Guess how? Lily? Just thought we dropped by, Lily just managed to escape from the noodle stall with a little help. <laughs> that wasn't really an escape. I know it gives a small giggle, briefly surprising both of us. I just thought that Lily might not be enjoying the festival. Well, now we can enjoy it together, right? The two nod happily before we set out of the library and toward the festivities. Let's get nighttime. I hand over some change to the girl behind the counter and take the two styrofoam cups of tea. I try to accentuate my bow a bit to cover for the fact that she's quite obviously deaf. I'm um, to think of it, I probably should have asked for help instead of leaving those two in the gardens while I bought drinks. <laughs> Trying to juggle the two cups of hot tea for them and a can of coffee for myself out of the vending machine isn't exactly easy. Uh, with some careful maneuvering though, I manage to keep everything stable and upright as I walk over to the bench where Lily and Hanako are sitting and chatting. It's actually quiet. Uh, it's actually quite a nice place, lit, by, lit only by moonlight, it's tucked away some distance from the main events. Compared to how hot it had been during the day, this spot is also pleasantly cool by now. Uh, not that it matters all that much, most of the visitors have moved to the areas that are either either closer to the fireworks or higher on the hill in order to view the display apparently planned. 
Welcome back, Asao. Her ears are good. I'm not exactly close, and even Hanako hadn't noticed me. Here you go. Sorry, it's instant, but that's all I they had left by now. Hanako gingerly takes a cup of takes a cup from my right hand, and I gently place the other into Lily's outstretched hands. Did you enjoy the festival, then, Asao? Yeah, it was pretty fun. An honest answer, much of the food may have been somewhat subpar, but it was a lot of fun in the end, especially with Hanako and Lily. In fact, I think those two may have enjoyed themselves even more than I did. With both Lily and me around, much of Hanako's withdraw withdrawn nature around others died down enough for her to enjoy herself. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> scared of me! As we sit drinking, the whistle of the first firework rings out before it explodes into a vibrant shower of blue against the night sky. Wow, this is really pretty. Uh, heralding the beginning of the end for the festival. Enthusiastic shouts can be heard from the crowds scattered around the school grounds celebrating them. For minutes on end, Hanako and I watch the fireworks overhead as Ellie blissfully listens to them with her eyes shut. Red, green, yellow, star-shaped, circular, and patterned. And all manner of shapes and colors fill the air, one after the other, and dance around the sky. A dance across the sky. No place near where I lived put on such lavish displays. Festivals like this were a thing of the past in such a metropolitan area. To be seeing such a sight with these two, it's probably the happiest I've been in a long while. So, that's it. The festival's finally ending. Yeah. She gives a delicate, wistful sigh. As much as I might complain about all the stuff we have to do, it's still sad that we'll have graduated before the next Yamaku festival. I walk towards and stand behind Zilli, just gently resting a hand on her shoulder. Don't worry. We still have Tanabata later in the year, right? You're right. It would be nice to go there when it comes. Minutes of silence pass, with only the blast of the fireworks to be heard. Seeing these two reminds me of those words of advice Lily had given me as we walked into town together. Cherish the opportunity to make new friends. Huh? Hey, Lily. She turns her head slightly to show that she's listening. Hanako's gaze, still firmly fixed on the technic technicolor fireworks bursting overhead. You mind if I join you two for tea every now and then? The smile on her face is more than enough to see her answer. It would be a pleasure, Hasao. Oh, like she crossed her arms. That's the first I've ever seen her do that. <laughs> oh! Hey, yo! <laughs> I was wondering when we were gonna finally get on to the next chapter. It's the first time I'm ever seeing this. So, I think it's pretty clear who I'm going after. I'm clearly going after Lily. Uh, I've never done Lily in this game, in case you guys wanted to know. I'm actually going to be quiet and let this just play out. Alright, so we finally made it into Act 2. So, like I said, in case you guys were wondering who I was going to be going after for this series, it was pretty obvious that it was going to be Lily. Um, I had never done Lily in this game before, so basically from here on out, it's going to be unknown. I don't know what happens. Um, like I said, I've played this game several times before. Uh, I've played this game three times. Um, I first beat the game with Emi, um, and then I played it again beat the game with Hanako, and then I beat the game a third time with Shizune. So the only characters I never did in this game were Lily and Rin, and I figured since I was going to be bringing this series back, I would always been interested in Lily, I was really curious about her, um, so I wanted to do Lily for this series. So if you guys might have noticed, uh, a couple times when we had the choices pop up, I took a few seconds to kind of think about them, mainly because I had to look up walkthrough to make sure I chose the right choices to get towards Lily's route. Um, because depending on your choices, those will lead you towards the other uh, characters. So I had to make sure that I chose the right choices uh, to get towards Lily. Um, so that's why in a couple of the choices, you'll see me like kind of go on and rant for a good minute or two. It's because I have to look up the choices on my phone. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we're finally into Act 2. Um, it took us long enough, Jesus Christ, about four and a half hours into this game, and we finally got into Act 2. Um, so it's nice to see that. We are going after Lily, like I had mentioned. That was a really cool animation since I've never seen it. Um, and yeah, I, I, let's just jump right back into this. 
it's kind of sweet to finally see that. I've never seen that animation before, so that was really, really cool. I wake to the annoying din of my alarm clock. It's bright red numerals lighting up my face. It's the same alarm clock I had at home, one of the few remaining artifacts from my days before coming to Yamaku. I'd hoped that using it would help ease my transition to this new life. No such luck, though. <laughs> Groggily dragging myself out of bed, I wipe the sleep out of my eyes, then reach over to my desk. I open a couple of the bottles of medication strewn, uh, strewn across it and swallow a few pills dry. By now, the process is starting to become automatic, uh, something I should be glad for, given their purpose. Feeling much more awake than before, I wander into the bathroom. While the shower warms up, my mind begins to wander as my new daily routines begins once again. The bright colors of the fireworks fill my mind, as do the two girls with whom I spent my time watching them. It feels strange to be moved so much by people I know so little about. Then again, I suppose there aren't these aren't normal circumstances. At least I have someone to talk to, now aside from my schoolmate next door. With the time left before school begins today waning, uh, with... with with the time left before school begins today waning, I began to get ready for class. Walking through the door into the classroom, I notice that I'm still somewhat early. I see about five or six students milling around, most of them looking as if they'd rather be still, rather still be in bed. Uh, it's at times like this that I appreciate being a morning person. That said, two students in particular seem just as perky as always. I can only guess. Yep, I just didn't Misha. I suddenly realized that my greeting would be lost on the former. Uh, so I quickly follow it with the up with the waif. She doesn't seem overly bothered. Or interested, for that matter. Hello, Hee-chan. Are you feeling well? I can only assume her greeting comes from Suzune. It's hard to tell if she's speaking as herself or Suzune sometimes. Better than most everyone else, I guess. You two seem bright and chirpy. Misha signs this back to Suzune as I say it, eliciting uh, a somewhat terse answer, if her sharp and rapid arm movements are any indication. Considering that these two... Uh, made such a big deal out of the festival preparations, I probably should have chosen my words more carefully. <laughs> Since you're a new student, we've been cutting you some slack. Uh, please don't expect this kind of test dodging to be allowed in the future. Misha looks as if she's about to add her own comment, but quickly goes back to interpreting as Shizune continues, animated. Uh, while your contribution to Class 3-2 stalls is appreciated, huh, word sure got around quickly, that or these two have their fingers on the pulse of the school. <laughs> We prefer your efforts to be focused on the task at hand, namely your own class. As much as I hate to admit it, they do have a point. Before I can respond, though, she's going to add something more, which draws a smile from Misha. <laughs> Did you enjoy the festival, then? Lecture over, I guess. Yeah, it was good. Did you two enjoy it? Zuna gets a short nod as Misha grins and bounces her head up and down. And the contrast, side by side, is amusing. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice more students starting to trickle into the classroom. A quick glance at my watch confirms that they're a few minutes late. There's Hanako. <laughs> she's all smiley. Uh, I look over at Hanako's seat and realize that she's already there, and contently reading a book. It makes me wonder just how long she's been there without noticing me. Without me noticing. With heavy footsteps coming up the hallway signaling Matao's arrival, our idle talking comes to an end and I take my seat next to Misha. As the door slides open, he strides through with a ponderous gate? Uh, his posture is even worse than usual, and his eyes are barely staying open. I guess my quip to Lily and Hanako about the staff was misplaced. Everyone opens their books as he reaches his desk, and the first class of the new week begins. I rub my eyes as the lunch bell rings out. Uh, glad for the temporary reprieve from work. Oh, there's Lily. I'm entirely unsurprised when I look over to the door and see Lily standing there, cane in hand, patiently waiting for Hanako. Considering her acceptance of my request to join them yesterday, I decided to spend my lunchtime with them rather than eat alone. Hanako moves surprisingly fast to meet her companion, and the two enter the hallway before I can catch up. Oh, jeez. Uh, <laughs> her little, like, animation scared me. Uh, Lily's head turns slightly, registering the sound of footsteps behind her. As Hanako notices and follows her lead, she almost jumps in surprise. You made me jump. H Hisao? I mean, um, hello, Hisao. Hi, sorry if I startled you. That turns to greet me, helped in her orientation by Hanako. Good afternoon, Hisao. Are you joining us? If it's not, no if it's no trouble, there's not much else to do, really. Uh, Lily gives a small nod, as if to silently brush away any idea that it would be troubling in the least. We descend one set of stairs and walk down the hallway to the usual room. Our pace somewhat quicker than usual thanks to Lily using Hanako for direction, rather than her cane in the railings. As expected, it's deserted. The sounds of the other clubs can bar only barely be heard as sunlight streams into the room from outside. 
Looking around the room, I noticed a couple of empty easels propped up against the wall that I don't think were there before. The art club must be using must use this room as extra storage. Should I get the chest set out? Ooh, chest. Hanako's voice seems less tense when she's directly addressing Lily. Yes, I'll make tea while you sort the pieces. Ah, I can do that for you if you'd like. <laughs> she pauses to offer for a moment before smiling, confirming that I've made the right choice. Her face is remarkably easy to read. Very well, thank you. <laughs> she just bow. Uh, she slides her retractable cane into the handle of her bag and sets it against one of the table legs before taking a seat opposite Hanako. To prepare tea for the three of us, I can hear the small wooden pieces being set on the board. I wonder how good Lily is at chess, given her circumstances. By the time I place the steaming uh, teacups onto the table, Lily and Hanako have already moved their first pieces as they nibble on sandwiches and rice balls from their respective bags. <gasps> rice balls! Those are so good! Oh, the chess board. I note that the chess board... Uh, I noticed that the, I know that the chessboard they're using has holes in the middle of each square, and pegs on the bottom of the pieces, and has each dark square slightly raised. Watching Lee's fingers skating over the board, tracing out the positions of the pieces, makes me marvel a little at this simple ingenuity of the design. It must be specifically made for blind players. That's pretty freaking cool. <laughs> Not gonna lie, uh, that's pretty sweet. Uh, here you go. And we're playing all we're playing chess. Hanako gives a small nod as I put down the cup next to her side of the board. Lily's hand ventures sideways slightly, so I gently place the cup touching the tips of her fingers, a gesture she seems to appreciate. I try to take a seat and silently sip my tea as a two play. The contrast in their appearances while playing is interesting to watch. Hanako looks closely at the board, her face one her face one of focused concentration. Lily on the hand keeps her head level and maintains her calm neutrality. Uh Lily's gentle voice addresses both of us as she continues to play. How was class? Now that the festival is over. I look to Hanako to see whether she'll answer first, but she but see that she's doing the same. Not great. <laughs> uh, half the class seemed to be dozing off, even including the teacher. Uh, not to mention a test on top of all that. Hanako quickly adds her own agreement with this. I can imagine that being a bit difficult for you being a transfer student. Well, I think I did fine. Other than the shock of a test coming so early, science is probably my best subject. How'd you do, Hanako? Me? Uh, okay, I guess. Hanako's too sincere to be able to pull off lying very well. That much is obvious. Lily's smile slips very slightly. From her reaction, Hanako must have, must have, mustn't uh, be skilled enough at academics to do very well without preparation. How did your class handle it, Lily? It was surprisingly well, actually. Only one student was absent, which was better than what the teacher expected. <laughs> uh, with the topic all but run dry, the two concentrate on their chess game once again. I can't say I've ever liked the idea of chess as a spectator sport, but given its unique nature, for once I'm wrapped in watching the game unfold. Same, to be honest. <laughs> Very interested. I, I didn't even know that was a thing. I mean, it makes sense with the, you know, for the blind to do that. So it's very interesting that that's an actual thing. I never really thought about that. As time wears on, both of them demonstrate decent skill at playing the game. Having captured two more pawns than Hanako, Lily has the upper hand, but only slightly. And so Hanako makes a strange move with her queen, seizing upon this lapse in judgment, Lily takes the piece with her knight. Without hesitation, Hanako moves a pawn to take Lily's rook on the opposite side of the board and promotes it to queen. Lily's face falters as her fingers move over the pieces and she realizes that she just fell into Hanako's trap. It's a little distracting to have the board traced out after each move, even if it's out of necess necessity. Judging by Hanako's lack of reaction, she must be used to this. She and Lily must have played at least a few games of chess against each other after all. Check. That's not bad at all. Nice, Hanako. The compliment causes her to flower into a surprised blush. That's a thank you. I didn't think it would work. I look over to Lily, her fingers having just finished tracing out the position of her remaining pieces in an attempt to extr extract her king from the bind. Oh, from this bind. I think this is checkmate. Hmm? I take another look at the board to confirm. Sure enough, her king has nowhere to escape without being threatened by another piece. My earlier question as to which of them is better at this has just been answered. So it is. Lily gives a small sigh as Hanako smiles. From their reactions, this seems like a fair, usual re result. How long have you two been playing? Since I was young. Lily nods at Hanako's brief answer. Hanako taught me how to play soon after I met her. I can beat her every now and then, but that's a rarity. I don't seem to have the right mindset for it. 
If Lily came to Yamaku at the start of high school and met Hanako when she moved to the dorms, that means she's only been playing for about a, one year. After seeing Hanako's level of play, I'm not surprised Lily has trouble beating her. But she's better at languages than I am, so... Lily gives an appreciative, if slightly amused, smile at Hanako's quick reversal of her compliment. Well, that's how it is. Much to everyone's surprise, the bell suddenly rings, heralding an end to the lunch break. Alright, and I think I'm going to end off right here. So thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Katawa Shoujo. If you did enjoy, make sure to like button down below. So if you're not subscribed, channel, subscribe as well. And yes, from here on out, we will be doing the Lily Root, obviously. Um, and yeah, we're going to basically see where this goes. Like I said, I have no clue. I've only done the other three characters, which is Hanako, who is on our right-hand side right now. Um, Imi and Shizune. So I don't know how Lily's story goes. So this will be very interesting. Um, but yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. This is CrazyMitch42, and I will see you all in another video.